Hello, everyone. Uh, this is AEC Tech Talk, where we're going to talk about insights, perspectives, and opinions for the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. Uh, my name is Nathan Wood, and today we're going to be interviewing Brett Young, the CEO of Building Systems Planning, and talking about their new tool, Clash MEP. For those of you who don't know uh, my background, uh, I, I do come from the industry uh, and am currently Chief Enabling Officer of Spectrum AEC, where uh, we do build people, really, and, and focus on the people and emotional intelligence and soft skills behind the adoption of new process and new technology. And uh, in my time with DPR Construction, got to experience, really, the, the power uh, of BIM and how BIM can really enable uh, disruptive workflows and uh, a much greater efficiency within this industry. And so uh, very introduced, it, it, sorry, very excited to uh, introduce Brett Young and what Building SP is doing. And so uh, with that, why, Brad, why don't you just talk a little bit about yourself and uh, what you're doing with Building SP. Thank you, Nathan. Um, so my name is Brett Young, and I'm with Building um, SP. And today we're going to be showing off Clash MEP, which is our Revit add-in that brings Clash detection into the Revit workflow directly. And um, so it'll be mostly a product demonstration of what we do. And Nathan, I'd love to get your comments about what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, I can tell you about Absolutely. myself a little bit. Um, I'm a Berkeley grad, and after being at Berkeley, I went and did construction management for uh, about nine years in here in California. And um, after that, I started a BIM consulting company and grew that into a 20-person uh, firm. And from there... Um, started a software development company, and that is Building SP. And Building SP is devoted to making the BIM, um, making better tools for um, how we go about and do BIM. So, uh, Nathan, I thought I'd go through kind of the problem statement of what we're kind of trying to tackle. We all love BIM. We've been doing BIM for um, well over a decade now. You save money and plan your work better. You get a benefit on the back end and you know, BIM is a increasing part of everything that we do in construction for planning. The problem is that BIM can be much more efficient. BIM is really kind of driven by people and um, is very heavily reliant on people workflows. And um, part of our effort is to make better tools that allow people to be more efficient. So those better tools um, kind of leverage the power of the people. Like your mission, you know, you kind of use the best assets of who you have and those are your people. So better BIM tools, um, more productivity because you're leveraging the power of people. So I can tell you about what we've done. So Clash MEP is a Revit add-in. It goes within Revit. What it does, it, it, it'll detect and display clashes in real time as you model in Revit. And so therefore it is a dynamic and real-time view of the clashes that you're creating as you go through a model. We're trying to do kind of like a, a more uh, clash avoidance type of deal rather than clash detection. So let me show you what we do. Here we have uh, a couple of systems and then we have um, a, a duct in between as a, as, a, as a thing. And so if I come up here and I, I just take a big pipe and um, you can, I'll model a pipe through these, uh, through these systems. You can see that the clashes are marked in this example in red. And what we've done is we've overlaid a mesh on top of the Revit model to identify the clash. And that clash will show up in, in every open 3D view or plan view. The other thing that you can do if I, I was going to say, as you're as you're doing this, a question for you. Uh, so it looks like these are all mechanical scopes, uh, either ductwork uh, with within themselves. Uh, is it able to clash with other scopes like structural, architectural work, or or other trades? It is. It'll clash within anything that is within the Revit environment. So if you if you go put a desk chair up in the air and and run a pipe through it, it'll show a clash with that chair. So uh, if I then hide the clash, I can hide the clashes. And then I can come back through and go um, compute clashes on only a route. So here's a route. This pipe is a is, uh, duct is a route. And so there, there are the clashes that I have uh, on the route. If I hide it again, I can then do a, um, a compute clash by doing a drag box and doing um, 
doing uh, a portion of it and only picks up a portion of it. And notice that we're changing the visibility of the of the systems to um, make you be able to, to see the clash. And then whenever you come up here and go hide clashes, they, they go back to what they were. Um, so wow. that's pretty simple, we think. You know, it isn't really that hard. Um, I can do one other thing. I can, I can um, come through and just to show you that um, I can um, hide my element here. Let me um, – I've now hidden that element, um, and if I come through and, again, model through it, you notice that I still pick up the clash. So that you can work within your view and not have everything visible, but still get flagged that you have a clash there um, as you go about and through it. And, again, if you, if you do um, – kind of the large um, select, you can see all the clashes again. So, so yeah, so a question for you, Brett, uh, is, is, you know, looking at the, the customers that would really drive, you know, a lot of efficiency and, and value out of seeing this, I mean, it sounds like it would be those who are doing, you know, existing uh, mechanical or engineering detailing uh, inside of Revit. Is, is that really the, the main customer that you're seeing coming to, uh, to Clash MEP? We think it'd be relevant to anyone who's doing MEP modeling in Revit. So if you're a mechanical engineering firm, you know, you should, you should not be creating clashes as you go through and make them. And, and um, so you should have Clash MEP turned on when you go do that. And if you're a, a subcontractor, obviously you're directly in the line of fire for, for coordination, which we think is relevant there too. Very interesting. Very interesting. So I know a, a lot of the discussions that, that I've had with, uh, Small, mid, and, and even larger mechanical contractors seem to be the, the challenge of moving from a, a 2D CAD workflow to uh, a truly 3D integrated, you know, Revit-driven uh, workflow. And it, it, I, feel, I feel like, you know, and I'm curious to get your thoughts, that the more that these types of tools like Clash MEP uh, make this uh, adoption process to go from a very different 2D workflow to um, what is a more parametric, uh, data-driven 3D workflow? Um, how, how do you see uh, Clash MEP sort of fitting it, making it easier for these guys to move from a CAD workflow to a BIM workflow? Well, I mean, um, there's going to be challenges no matter how you cut it. But if we can all kind of lower the coordination effort that we all go and do and um, and make – you know, de-emphasize clash detection as a thing because we're doing clash avoidance and clash, you know, um, clash within Revit, then um, I, I think that the overall workflow just gets better. This model has LinkedIn mechanical files. And again, if I can um, just go through and create a bunch of clashes with it, with, uh, with the model, you can see as it, as it goes and um, as it, as it creates all those. So once again, you can see where 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 we're clashing. Awesome. We've worked within the industry, and so we know the types of things that you want to be going and looking at. We're going to clash with other Revit objects. We're clashing with linked models. We're clashing with linked or in-model models that are hidden. If you have uh, CAD files, convert them to IFC, and we'll clash with those. And then we even clash with point clouds that are within Revit. The key thing here is that we, we don't require Navisworks and we don't have to upload or export any of our files. It is directly within Revit and turns Revit into a one platform modeling and coordination tool. Brett, uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned the tool Navisworks. So how much time would it typically take within a Navisworks to do this sort of clash detection that, that you're trying to eliminate the need for? Well, I mean, we, we've all gotten pretty good at clash detection. I mean, we've been doing it for a long time, right? Now it's been around for a long time. The problem isn't really how good or bad or how long it takes to do now it's works. It's still a separate deal that you have to go and do, right? And so by keeping it real time and having it within Revit, we're not having to do the save and the export and then the combining of files 
or if you're using glue um, the upload and then the clash detection within you know on the cloud awesome well uh what, one last question for you, Brett, is sort of a, a technologist and a futurist in this industry. I'm, I'm interested to get your thoughts on uh, how do we solve this, uh, this interface between the designers and, and the builders that it seems like you're very much solving here with, with Clash MEP. And if you were to look into your crystal ball and, and see the future of perfect collaboration between the designers and the detailers and the fabricators and the delivery of uh, you know, the scope of work of MEP, uh, how, how would you see the, the perfect world and what are maybe the barriers right now that don't relate to technology that are preventing that from happening? Yeah, I think I think the technology is really kind of um, getting better and better every day. You know, we see a lot of people using uh, collaboration for Revit now. And um, while that product by Autodesk met, might not be the perfect product yet, it definitely brings people all into one platform so that they're all kind of working um, in one location. Um, I also think people are getting better, frankly, you know, back in, you know, back when you started in BIM, um, no one know how, knew how to do BIM and you guys were really kind of a DPR were really kind of, um, spearheading how you go and create a BIM workflow. You know, we didn't have BIM workflows and you kind of, you guys kind of made them and, um, we've been doing it long enough that we kind of know how, how to do it now. Um, so I think people are getting better too. Um, and people are going to keep on getting better. So I, I think, um, so I think between technology and people, I think that we're we're, we're getting better. Awesome. Yeah. No, I I do echo that. I think that we've come a long way in the five or six years. You know, well, more than that. You know, almost a dozen years now that class detection has been around. I think we're we're really ready now to move into this world of of class avoidance. And and so great that that you guys are out there with building SP to try to build these. Uh, plug in to, to facilitate that uh, disruption of, of the process in this industry. So um, I guess any other last thoughts or how, how can folks get a hold of you to learn more about Building SP and what you guys are working on? Yep. So we have a website, uh, buildingsp.com. Info at Building SP. You can get information about pricing and uh, trials and any other questions you have about what, we, what we're doing and what we can do in the future.